Welcome to this edition of the Desert Vision, presented by U.S. Army Central. I'm Specialist Adam Parent. And I'm Specialist Brenton Nordyke. Coming up in this edition of the Desert Vision, the Secretary of the Army visits Camp Arif John as part of his U.S. Army Central tour. Lieutenant General Garrett conducts a town hall meeting, and the 2018 Best Warrior Competition takes place. First up, the Secretary of the Army, Dr. Mark T. Esper, visits soldiers at Camp Arifjan. His visit included tours of the base, as well as meetings with key leadership of U.S. RSEM. So today we had the, the privilege of hosting the Secretary of the Army here at Camp Arifjan and uh, sharing with him the mission, vision, uh, enduring priorities, and current operational focus of U.S. Army Central and our role in, in operations across the Middle East and Central Asia. And, and we had the chance to do that by introducing them to soldiers, by discussion with leaders, and, uh, and just sharing in general with them uh, what we're doing to, to accomplish the mission and stay nested with his priorities and the Chief of Staff of the Army's priority. Part of problem solving is to define the problem. I think visits like we did today are one way that we support the Secretary's effort to modernize our Army by allowing him to have direct contact with soldiers that are operating some of our most advanced and current combat systems and hearing from them the strengths and weaknesses that they've observed both in technical capabilities of that equipment and our soldiers' ability to operate it. Coming forward to uh, the Central Command region uh, really gives him an opportunity to see the way uh, some of his decisions are supporting readiness. I think it's a great opportunity anytime a soldier can talk to a leader. I feel honored because knowing that he cares because, you know, some people, they'll get to the top and probably just, you know, just care about themselves, but it speaks about his character for him to get to the top and be able to come down and share some things that he knows with us so we can succeed as we get older with our careers. Well, it's always good to get out of the Pentagon and come out and find out what's really happening on the ground. And I find that in all my travels, and I've been on the road now for seven or eight months, that I really find ground truth, no pun intended, about what's happening, uh, either with regard to our equipment challenges in forward station units or individual soldiers or what's happening with units. I just get a lot of good feedback that I take back to Washington, D.C. They're very excited about what they're doing, enthused about the mission, and I think uh, our sensibility to, to leverage them really says a lot about the mission, uh, the command, and the ability of our total Army to, to support these missions. During his visit, Dr. Esper joined soldiers from the 49th Theater Gateway Company for physical readiness training, engaged with senior leaders, and toured a U.S. Army prepositioned stock warehouse. U.S. Army Lieutenant General Michael X. Garrett, the U.S. Army's Central Commanding General, conducted a town hall on June 14th. His four main topics of discussion included readiness, protecting the force, communication, and transitions. Every single soldier in this brigade is going to understand why we as a nation continue to invest our treasure and our blood in this part of the world. They hear it straight from the general's mouth, his intent, uh, how he sees the world, and what his, what's going on in his mind. Readiness is uh, and remains you know, our number one uh, priority. You can't beat uh, a commander that gets out, um, leads from the front, um, and talks to soldiers and lets them know what he's personally thinking. That's, that, that's the best form of leadership, and I think that's what he did today. After commanding U.S. Arsenal for over two and a half years, which includes 20 countries, Garrett said communication is an enduring priority that he takes very seriously. He also encouraged soldiers to express any questions or concerns they had in an open discussion forum with other Camp Arif John senior leaders. For 100 years, 3rd Army, also known as U.S. Army Central, has fulfilled its founding purpose to be an operational Army headquarters that is ready to answer the nation's call. The soldiers who served in Patton's own helped free Europe by defeating Nazi Germany, liberating Kuwait from Saddam Hussein, and continuing the fight against violent extremist organizations threatening our security and the sovereignty of our allies. None of this would have been possible without the professionalism, heroism, and sacrifice of the men and women who are part of this storied unit. Thank you and your families for 100 years of distinguished and honorable service. Third, always first, Army Strong. Next up, 
We'll team up with Sergeant Andrew Carroll as he covers the 2018 USR Scent Best Warrior Competition, which included soldiers from across the AOR. Goes through my head at the two mile start line is this is gonna suck. No! I am not a runner, but uh, I, I, I push myself. I, I don't slack on it because I, I know how important it is for myself and my company that we're physically fit. Competition is good for soldiers uh, because it's like a camaraderie thing. So we can see how we can push each other. I know my limits, but maybe they can bring something out more in me and I for them. Competing in Best Warrior for my individual readiness, it'll, it'll build my confidence more. I know what I'm capable of right now, but maybe during this, it's like, holy crap, I didn't know I could do that. I think that it's great that we get to train and compete with other soldiers from other units and companies. We're not always gonna be with the same people. So if I, if I get deployed in a combat zone, I should be able to function and move as well with somebody I don't know, as well as somebody I do know. So the best warrior competition brings out the best in all soldiers. So all the people who are competing, they know that they're gonna have to demonstrate their warrior tasks and skills. They're gonna have to excel physically. It shows you who is a whole soldier. You know, you're not just evaluating one aspect of a soldier, you're evaluating the soldier as a whole. The soldier who's capable of doing all these tasks is a capable soldier, it's a combat ready soldier. Um, it's really important that we train in similar environments like this uh, because if I need to throw on a backpack and just walk, I should be able to go 12 miles. And yeah, it's not gonna be fun, but I can make it there and still be able to uh, fight and help. I think people should want to do these and I know they're long and it's pretty grueling on the body sometimes if you're not really physically prepared for it, but it's a great experience. If I won this competition, it would be an awesome feeling for sure, knowing that you're representing the best of Army Central Command. Randall Going on to compete with the 22 best soldiers and the Army as a whole, it would be an, an awesome feeling. The Best Warrior competition promotes morale and cohesion among soldiers and reinforces the importance of individual excellence. Soldiers with the 97th Transportation Company, 541st Combat Sustainment Support Battalion, 7th Sustainment Brigade, and 143rd Expeditionary Sustainment Command trained on their Landing Craft Utility Series 2000 vessel in the Gulf. The soldiers conducted firefighter, man overboard, and other drills as part of their training. So today we conducted our uh, weekly TDIs, test drills, inspections. We go out, we test the crew on their knowledge and their readiness to be able to react to certain events, uh, certain uh, cases like uh, enemy uh, coming into our uh, AO, uh, fire on the ship, uh, abandoned ship procedures and man overboard procedures in the event of an emergency occurs. Team, this crew, they're top notch. Uh, we do these drills to get that reaction time down to what I expect them to be on station and be able to perform and do. So they did outstanding today, amazing. When we're outside of this, this port, it's us. So we're the firefighters, um, we're the electricians, we are the dewaterers, um, we're everything. So our, our lives depend on our training when it comes to fighting fires or dewatering a space. To defending the vessel from, from an outside threat. This training was to test the crew members on their knowledge and readiness to react to enemy fire and abandon ship procedures. Hi, I'm Stephanie Abdullah, and on behalf of the Army Surgeon General, this is your Army Medicine, Be As Healthy As You Can Be, Health Minute. July is Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month. Juvenile arthritis, also known as JA, affects nearly 300,000 children in the U.S. JA describes many specific autoimmune or inflammatory conditions that can develop in children 16 and under. These conditions share many common symptoms, such as joint pain, joint swelling, redness, and warmth. 
JA can also attack the skin, muscles, eyes, and gastrointestinal system. With early diagnosis and intervention, remission is possible. Treatment goals include reduction of inflammation, control of pain, and improved quality of life. Treatment involves medication, physical activity, eye care, and healthy eating. If you suspect your child suffers from JA, your pediatrician can help you find a pediatric rheumatologist. Pediatric rheumatologists are available at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, Manigan Army Medical Center, via telehealth, and in the TRICARE network. Visit the Walter Reed website for more information. Army Medicine, one team, one purpose, conserving the fighting strength. Nautical Horizon aims to ensure that if trouble breaks out in the Middle East and there are no airstrips or easily accessible supply lines, the service can still land a large force on the foreign shore efficiently. Let's join the soldiers participating in the exercise as they get nautical in the Gulf. This exercise showcases the Army watercraft's ability to deploy, receive, and stage equipment. The Run to Home Base 9K Shadow Run supports veterans suffering from the invisible scars of war, such as post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injuries. The Massachusetts Army National Guard participated in the run, and they had a message for their loved ones back home. Good morning everybody, this is Colonel Matt Kennedy from the Mass Army Guard and we're here at Camp Arif John Kuwait. We just finished the 2018 Run to Home Base Shadow Run here at Camp Arif John and we're so happy to finish. We're here with all Massachusetts Army National Guard folks and members around the Boston area and folks that love the Boston area. We're here to help you and we thank you so much for all your help and support for the home base program and all you do for the Invisible Wounds of War to help soldiers, family members, and veterans. We're so happy you're running. A little shout out for my wife's Chief of the Troops team. Thanks, honey, for all you're doing for the troops. Ready for the 2018 home base team. Let's go home base! Go, go home base! The run's name was inspired by the nine innings of a baseball game. Many soldiers attended the event, and the first 450 runners received free t-shirts. You ever done any 9Ks? Oh no, I can never run that far. Yeah, I'm more of a gym kind of guy. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Desert Vision. For these stories and more, check out our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash U.S. Army Central. And our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash U.S. Army Central. Your unit can be a part of the Desert Vision. USR Sent Public Affairs is holding a one-day Unit Public Affairs Representative Training Course at Camp Arif John on Wednesday, August 8th from 0900 to 1700 at the Education Center. For more information, contact the USR Sent Public Affairs Office at 318-430-7525. I'm Specialist Brenton Nordyke. And I'm Specialist Adam Parent. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.